Hello everyone, welcome to the video on quinolones. This video covers medicinal chemistry 3 unit 3 topic of quinolones. All the things which are given in the syllabus copy is covered in this video. I am going to explain about mechanism of action of quinolones, SCR of quinolones, structure and nomenclature and adverse effects. This is my YouTube video channel. If you like the video content, do subscribe and share. Let us get into the topic. Now, quinolones, see, quinolones, technically they are fluoroquinolones. Due to SAR developments, what it is observed is, fluoroquinolones are more effective than quinolones. Hence, the majority marketed products are fluoroquinolones, but they are commonly known as quinolone antibiotics. Now, when you see the mechanism of action, so these are all the only class of antibiotics that directly inhibit bacterial DNA synthesis. How? By inhibiting DNA gyrase and topoisomerase of bacterial enzymes. By inhibiting these enzymes, it results in DNA damage and cell death. Hence, these drugs act as bactericidal agents. Side means to kill. An agent which kills bacteria is known as bactericidal agents. Tetracyclines, chloramphenicol will not kill the bacteria, but they will stop the growth of bacteria, hence they are known as bacteriostatic agents. Now, see, it all started with nalidixic acid. The first known quinolone drug is nalidixic acid. When you see the drug, see, chemically it has got this ring. This ring is known as naphthyridine. At first and eighth positions, two nitrogens are known there, hence it is known as 1,8-naphthyridine. Now, look at the substitutions present. Now, it has got this ethyl presence, methyl is present and oxo group is present. So, all these substitutions are arranged in alphabetical order. Hence, first comes ethyl and then comes methyl and then oxo. What are the position? At first position, ethyl is there. At seventh position, methyl is there. And fourth position, oxo group is there. And what is the parent ring? 1,8-naphthyridine. And what is the functional group? Carboxylic acid. So, see, initially we need to talk about what are the substitution presence and then parent ring and then functional group. So, when you when you follow the order, you will get the name like this. 1-ethyl, 7-methyl, 4-oxo, 1-8-naphthyridine, 3-carboxylic acid. Then, with the structural activity relationship, new drugs are developed from this nalidixic acid. You can see, see, majority of the drugs like norfloxacin, lomfloxacin, cipro, gatifloxacin, the nitrogen is removed from this naphthyridine ring. So, without nitrogen, this ring is known as quinoline. Now, along with this quinoline, there is one more uh, difference is there. See, for all the compounds, a fluorine substitution is there. Hence, these drugs are known as fluoroquinolines. With all the improvement, fluoroquinolines found to be more effective than all the derivatives. Hence, majority drugs which are available in the market are fluoroquinoline derivatives. Even further, if you see, all of them has got this ring, piperazine ring. So, these are known as piperazinyl, piperazinyl fluoroquinolines. So, these drugs are commonly known as piperazinyl fluoroquinolines because you have a piperazinyl ring, fluorine is thin and quinoline is there. So, this is how the drugs are developed. Now, see, whenever we want to master structure activity relationship, you need to identify the marketed drugs and understand the different structural patterns. Like, see, all of them contains piperazine ring. That means at this position, piperazine ring will increase its activity. Hence, these drugs are used in market. Same thing with fluorine. Everything has got this fluorine substitution here. So, fluorine also enhances activity. Let us, let us get a common idea about SCR. Now see, when you see the SCR, look this thing. See, let me write down the structure. So this is what is a general quinoline is. Now when you attach a, a ketone group, it becomes quinolone. Own means this one. Now look at them. See this own along with this at third position Shivo OH. Now, this combination, this 4-oxo and 3-carboxylic acid moiety is essential for high activity. The reason is, what is the mechanism of action? These drugs will bind with the DNA enzymes of bacteria, like DNA gyrase and DNA topoisomerase. To bind with that enzymes, this structural pattern is required. Hence, this becomes a pharmacophore. That means, all the drugs should contain this combination. Because this is the major mechanism of action. With the presence of these groups, it binds and inhibits the enzyme. So, it is required. That is what is a CR motive. Now, let us get into the other things. Now, this is the first one. 
See, at this place, substitution of ethyl or cyclopropyl increases activity. Look at them. At one, you have ethyl is there, ethyl is there, ethyl is there, cyclopropyl, cyclopropyl. What does it mean? You Both the substitution enhances activity. Hence, in the marketed products, we have that substitution. Now, R2, mostly it is hydrogen. So, you don't see any substitution. Or small rings are also allowed, but here, you don't see any substitution. It is only hydrogen. So, that is what is required. Now, after that, we have seen this is a pharmacophore requirement. With this combination, DNA uh, enzyme binding inhibition occurs. Now, R5 also no substitution, only hydrogen is most common. Now, this is important, see. R6, at R6, you have fluorine that facilitate the penetration of quinolones into bacterium and target binding. So, enhances the activity. That is the reason why all of them has got fluorine at this position. What is the position? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6th position. At 6th position, all of them contains fluorine because it enhances activity. Now, at 7th position, a basic heterocyclic ring is favored activity. So, this is what? So, this is heterocyclic ring and basic in nature. The moment nitrogens are there, lone pair of electrons are available, hence it is basic in nature. So, a basic heterocyclic ring is required to enhance activity. Last but not the least, see this, we have seen in aldixic acid, there is a nitrogen is there, it is naphthyridine ring. And in other drugs, carbon is replaced. So, carbon or nitrogen is tolerated. See, nerdixic acid is naphthyridine derivative. Similarly, anaxosin also naphthyridine derivative. Still, it has got activity. So, these are all the structural activity relationships. Now, understand all these things. Let me cover everything. See, <coughs> see at first the first point is, at first position, an ethyl or cyclopropyl increases activity. At second position, only hydrogen is tolerated. This motif is required for structure, uh, for its mechanism of action. And at R5, only hydrogen is tolerated. And at, at this position, at 6th position, a fluorine increases activity. At 7th position, a basic heterocyclic ring is required. Now, the 8th position, you can have either carbon or nitrogen. So, all these are structure activity relationship points. Going to the next one. Now, in the syllabus, Ciprofloxacillin synthesis and its structure is given. Now look at them. See, this thing is common. So this is the basic ring. Now what are the substitutions you have? A cyclopropyl is there, piperazan ring is there, a fluorine is there. So first we need to mention about substitution. See, alphabetically cyclopropyl comes first and then fluoro and then oxo. At first position cyclopropyl is there, sixth position fluoro is there, fourth position oxo is there. And at seventh position this piperazinyl Quinoline is the basic ring and at 3 position carboxylic acid is there, this is functional group. So, this is what is nomenclature. Now, whenever we want to synthesize drugs, you need to understand an approach called as retrosynthesis. Retrosynthesis means look at looking the structure and going back, how can you make this drug? You have three different pieces are there, like this one is a basic ring and I am sorry, include this one. This one is a basic ring and you need to attach a cyclopropyl and piperazin ring. So, we need three different steps, three different fragments to be attached. Understand this synthesis. So, it all starts with this one, 7 chloro, 6 fluoro, 4 oxoquinoline, 3 ethyl carboxylate. So, this is the basic ring of all the quinolines, right? Now, to this a cyclopropyl chloride is used as a reagent and this cyclopropyl chloride attaches here by the removal of HCl. So, what happened? We have attached this cyclopropyl group. Now, what else is required? This ester has to be converted into acid and then a piperazinyl group has to be attached. Now, by using a strong base, ester is converted to acid and then by using piperazine ring, you will get ciprofloxacillin derivative. So, very simple thing. You need to understand this thing. What all the things are required? See, this is the basic ring and to which you need to attach two different rings, this one and this one. That's it. This is what is the synthesis of ciprofloxacin. Now, the other drugs, norfloxacin, again, see, we need to understand what all the substitutions are there. So, at first position, ethyl group is there. At sixth, sixth position, fluoro is there. Fourth position, oxo. Seven, piperaginyl, quinoline, three carboxylic acid. So, all of them the same pattern. First, we need to uh, explain what all the substitution presence and then parent ring and then functional group. Now, lomifloxacin, again, understand the difference. You have additional methyl group is there. So, one ethyl at first position, ethyl, 6 side difluoro. Now, additional fluorine is also there. And at seventh position, 3 methyl piperazinyl is there, 4 oxo quinoline, 3 carboxylic acid. 
Now again, gatifloxacin, same thing. So at first position, cyclopropyl is there. Sixth position, fluoro is there. And eighth position, a methoxy group is there. And at seventh position, this is seventh position, a substitution is 3-methylpiperazine. At fourth position, oxo is there, quinoline, 3-carboxylic acid. Now, fluoroquinoline's adverse effects. See, the most common adverse effects are nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Some of the drugs will show CNS problems like headache, dizziness or lightheadedness. So patients with CNS disorders such as epilepsy should be treated cautiously. Now some of them also show phototoxicity, advice to avoid excessive sunlight and to apply sunscreens. Now the most important other one is connective tissue problems like it should be avoided in pregnancy and nursing mothers and in children under 18 years of age. The major problem is it causes tendonitis. Now this one is tested in GPAT uh, 2022 exam. Which of the following drug causes tendonitis means fluoroquinolones, the major problem is tendonitis, connective tissue problems. So this is about uh, quinolones of medicinal chemistry, third year one. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, do subscribe and share.